welcome to my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I thought I would go through what is essentially a plans video but I'm calling it something slightly different and, the, and I'll explain that in a moment. I'm calling it my wish list for sewing in autumn but it's actually autumn going into winter really. Um, and the reason I've called it something slightly different is because when I started to write things down about what I thought I would like to sew or what more more about what I'd like to wear as opposed to what I'd like to sew so that I could then sort of go from there um the list became quite long and you'll know me in times gone by I have had huge long plans and the thing is they are all things I want to sew but let's be honest I'm not going to have time to sew all of those things so I'm calling this my wish list so that I can pick things off of it um, as and when I feel like oh, that's what I'd quite like to sew at the moment. So that's where I'm going with this. Now I wanted to do this plans video quite some time ago but I didn't because first of all I was I was quite busy, I had a few things on and my mind was elsewhere, um, I wasn't doing a huge amount of sewing and the weather changed for the better again which is lovely and I'm definitely not going to complain and it's very warm at the moment but if you're anything like me I find it really hard trying to think of things that I want to wear and make for the cooler months when it's really hot it just it feels wrong <laughs> it's like listening to Christmas music in the middle of the summer not that I've ever done that um, but yeah do you know what I mean it's a bit of a strange thing <laughs> So before I start on my wish list, I thought I would just share with you what I'm wearing today. I have got on the Friday Pattern Company uh, Davenport dress. It's a really lovely woven dress. It is tied in the middle with a little channel that you tie in with a tie. I've got it on quite loosely today because it is ridiculously hot here today. In fact, at one point I thought, oh, it's so nice. I'll go and sit out in the garden and have a cup of tea. Um, but it was actually far too hot to sit out there. <laughs> that's how warm it is today so it's very lightweight I quite like it. it's got a nice elasticated neck band to it which is lovely as well um, and I also wanted to say a massive thank you and hello to anybody that's new thank you to anybody that has subscribed recently I've had a bit of an influx of subscribers and I just wanted to say a massive thank you and a massive welcome so thank you very much for joining my channel so like I say, this is a bit of a wish list as opposed to an actual plans and I've set it out in different categories and my first category, which has only got one item in it to be fair, is potty season. So I would really like to make a really nice new frock. I've got a ball that I'm going to be going to in the middle of October, which is for a friend's charity ball and I have decided I would like to make the Vicky Sews Lucia dress. Now I hope that's how you say it. But yes, Lucia dress. And I'll put pictures up on the screen of all of the different items that I'm talking about. But I went to Birmingham a couple of months ago now, I think it was. And while I was there, I was in the rag market and I bought this quite inexpensive um, satiny fabric. And I absolutely love it. And it does remind me of the front cover um, picture of the Lucia dress. But I absolutely love this. It's really nice and lightweight and flowy. It's got a, a crepe back and a satiny front. And I'd really like to have a go at making that. Now, whether I end up making it or not, I don't know because let's face it, October is literally just around the corner and I've got lots of other things on between now and then. But I would really like to have a go at making that. If I don't have chance to make it before October, I do have a couple of Christmas parties to go to in December, so I might have chance to make it before then. So that would be really great. So the next category is outerwear. Now, if you have been following me for a while, you'll know that I have quite a number of whips <laughs> in my um, in my armour, if you like. And um, I have been trying to think about working my way through them, whether that is giving them up and, and you know throwing them away or or turning them into something else or gifting them to somebody else or actually sewing them up but I really want to work through them so that I don't have any left basically and then I want to take a leaf out of the very lovely Rachel who is the French scenes book and I want to try and make sure that I don't have whips hanging around and that I just finish items as I'm as I'm going <laughs> That's the idea. But within my whips, I have two outerwear uh, garments. Now, one of these was one that I 
had half decided that I was going to give away. And then at the last minute, I thought, oh, no, I'm going to keep hold of it just in case. And that is the Sew Over It Jessie Coat Again. Now, I have made a huge amount of this. I have the Sew Over It Jessie Coat Again already in a different um, fabric. I was going to say different flavour, um, different fabric. And I, I wore it all the time last winter and last autumn. So I like the idea of making it. I think it was because it was in a different colour for me. It's in like a dark khaki green. Um, I bought this fabric at a... Um, at a stitch festival or a knitting and stitching show. I can't remember the store, unfortunately, but I bought this lining fabric, which is a viscose fabric, and I got that at Make, which I thought complemented that quite nicely. So when that when the coat is opened up, I thought that was quite nice and bright and fresh. Um, but I think what happened is we then went into, I started making it last autumn or winter with the lovely Helen, who's Stitcher at Repeat. We had a day together and she was making a gorgeous pink one. And I was making this one. And um, we, or I think what happened is I, I slowed down on sewing it and then it's turned into spring and then summer. And it was just like, well, I don't, I don't really want to make it. And I felt like it was a bit dull and dowdy and not the sort of thing that I'd want to wear. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think going into autumn, I think it will be quite nice. So there isn't a huge amount left to do on that. And it would be such a shame not to make it up. If I make it and I do still find that it's something that I'm not going to wear, that's fine. I'll either put it on Vinted or gift it to somebody or something like that. So that was outerwear number one and uh, whip number one. Whip number two, and I think this is the only other whip that I'm going to be talking about in this video, um, but another outerwear is the Guthrie Garni Sewing Society kit that I had for the Hovea jacket. And the Hovea jacket is by um, Megan Nies uh, Nielsen. If I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. I know lots of people say it in different ways. So I bought this in the um, dark green fabric. So it's very similar actually to the Jessie Cotigan fabric that I've just shown you, but this is slightly more of a bottle green. But I really like this. I'll put up an image of the um, style that I've cut out because there are a few different styles in the Hovea um, or Hovia, however you say it, um, pattern. There are lots of different styles. So um, I'll put up the one that I'm actually going to be sewing. But again, I've been told this is a really quick and easy sew and I've already got it all cut out. So this is on a, you know, on a pattern piece here. Apparently it's really quick. So I'm going to get on and I'm going to sew that. <laughs> So both of those pieces of outerwear are whips and both of those, funnily enough, are outerwear that don't have any fastenings to them. I'm guessing you probably could put a bit of a fastening on the Hovia jacket just to sort of tie it or something like that, but I kind of want to keep it as it's meant to be. So I would like to have or make another jacket which has um, a fastening to it, but I do already have quite a lot of smart coats and I've got fabric and I've got patterns to make some long coats and really smart things but the thing that I'm really after at the moment is something shorter and I want to have a really good play with um, linings and things like that so I'd really like to make a bomber jacket and I'd like to make it out of this black corduroy that I have got so I've, the other thing that I'm trying to do is use lots of my fabric that I've already got in my stash rather than going and making uh, buying lots of, of new fabric. There are one or two things where I might need to buy something like for example this. I would like to do a black bomber jacket and I'd like to line it but I'd like something really bright and funky so it's all done up and it all looks lovely but when you undo it it's like wow look at that inside there. <laughs> um, and I was inspired to do a bomber jacket because my daughter who, um, my eldest daughter, she lives in London, she came home and visited us over several times over the winter and she had a new black bomber jacket in corduroy and it was just really smart and I thought yeah that's what I'd like to, to make. Now I have two patterns that I might have a, an attempt at. The first one which I'm sure all of you have seen and heard of is the Sew Over it Amelia jacket. I think this is quite a smart looking jacket and a very smart take on a bomber jacket and I do really like that and I've got the pattern already. And then the other one is, I have to get my notes, I'm sorry, is the Simplicity 8418. And if I do this, 
then I will more than likely be doing it as a collaboration with a very lovely Karen who is so little time. We quite often do collaborations together and um, just showcasing a pattern in different styles, different fabrics, and we've both got a very slight different body shape. Um, so it's really interesting to, to look at that, but she would like to make this pattern as well. So we're hoping that we might be able to make it together. So yes, either one of those, more likely the simplicity one. One of the things that I have been really trying to do is try to find what things I want to wear all the time. So I have had a change in, in my circumstances over the last um, 12 months or so. So in February, I gave up my job um, and I've never really sort of talked to you about why that is or, or, or anything like that. I just needed to find something else and something different to do. And I've not shared this yet, but I've actually started um, doing a bit of training and I am going to train to become a personal trainer. And I'm really excited about this, but it does mean that for the next 12 to 18 months or so, I am gonna be at home studying and I don't have to be in gym kit the whole time <laughs> to be doing that, but I do need to be comfortable. But I miss wearing the things that I would wear to work, the really smart dresses or the nice flowy, pretty dresses and all that kind of thing. But sometimes when I'm at home, I just think, I don't really fancy wearing that because it's, it doesn't seem right or it doesn't seem comfortable. Um, and one of the things I'd like to do is in, indulge a little bit more into some loungewear. So things that I think look fairly smart, but not, um, n not, Office if you if you know what I mean. So I'm going to take a leaf out of Sarah's book, which is who is so Sarah style, and Sarah and Cara actually, who's um, so so mad. They have both made the Derwent trousers um, from this book, which is the Sewn with Knitted Fabrics by Wendy Ward. Now this book isn't mine; it's actually been lent to me by a very lovely friend, which is great. Um, and I have traced out the Derwent trousers. Now I will say the friend that lent me this book actually lent it to me a long time ago and I had a flick through and kind of gave it back and said oh thanks so much that's really lovely and just didn't really particularly want to sew anything out of it and I think it's really interesting when that happens and then you find somebody else that's then made something that you potentially weren't interested in and it draws your attention back to it because the Derwent trousers obviously were in here. I saw them and I was like, meh. And then Sarah made them and then Cara made them. And I was like, oh my gosh, they are actually really, really lovely. So I'm gonna show you these and I'm gonna ask Sarah and Cara if they mind if I share pictures of them. But I don't think the pictures in here particularly give this justice because they just look so lovely on Sarah and Cara. And so they inspired me to, to make it. So I asked my friend if I could borrow the book again. And when I went to Birmingham, I had um, the chance to buy some very inexpensive fabric and I have mountains of this. It's actually on my lap at the moment. I've got five metres of it. I'm so hot. It's absolutely boiling. But this is a knit fabric in a grey. Now, I think this might be the back. So I'm going to try and show you because it's slightly darker on one side. If I show you the difference between the two, can you see that? So it's darker on one side. Than on the other so I think I could literally choose whichever side I wanted it wouldn't really matter but I thought that this would be a really good test run because I think I bought five meters and it was something like four pound for the whole lot not four pound a meter but like four pound for everything and um, I think this would be a really good fabric for me to have a practice at making those dough ones in and then I would like to make a top now I think that Sarah and Cara both make is it the pogo knit top I can't quite remember the name of it but I think that's the name of the top they make but I've not made that and I just want to make something that I've already got and that I already know fits me because I've made before and I think I'm just going to make the Helen's Closet Jackson tee and I'm going to make a short sleeve version and a long sleeve version. Now they might end up becoming pyjamas and that's absolutely fine but the idea is that if these work and they look really nice that I might then just buy some really nice plain black um, jersey fabric and then they would be something that would be comfortable that I could wear in the house but if I needed to knit down to the shops I'd feel fine wearing that. Not sure if I would in this because I feel like it might look possibly a little bit pyjamery. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm quite excited about making a loungewear set out of that. So next up on my wish list is to 
have a few more pairs of trousers and I really like wearing jeans and I and I know some people that sew sew everything but they just won't sew jeans because it's it's just not worth it um to some extent I do agree with that and I and, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit about um buying clothes and making clothes and sort of how I feel about that and if I do come across a pair of trousers that I like, which I have done recently, actually, I bought a pair of viscose trousers with a side zip and they're really comfortable and I really like them and they, they weren't very expensive. They were like £20 and I just thought, I'm just going to buy them rather than go, oh, I'm going to go home and make these. <laughs> they were there. They were just right there. So I bought them. <laughs> but I would really like to have a go at making some more trousers and really getting the fit right. Now, I am going to talk to you about a pair of trousers, which I've spoken to you about for about two or three years running. So I do apologise if at this point you go, oh, here we go again. She's going to talk about those blimmin' Anna Anna and Philippa pants. <laughs> and I am, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but I feel like this year is the year for me to give them a go. And the reason behind that is because for some reason I decided to give the fear trousers a go and I just went for it. I just I just made them. I didn't care about doing the toile. I just did them. And the results were so great and I was so pleased. I still don't think that I've got the fit perfect for me on the fears, but they're so close that a tweak here and a tweak there but it's made me feel a bit braver about just going for it now with a couple of other pairs of trousers and styles that I'm going to talk to you about. So I do have the um, Guthrie Garney Sewing Society kit again, and I've got this um, in a beigey colour, camel colour. And I do think that this would be a really good addition to my wardrobe to have for the autumn, probably not the winter, but for the autumn and for spring. And they are such a nice style pair of trousers. They're not overly tight. Um, they're slightly jeans looking. I just really like the idea of making these. And I, I've got to stop procrastinating over these and thinking, but what if I get them wrong and it all goes wrong? What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is this fabric, which I've had now in my stash in here, could go to waste. It could. I could make them and they could fit and they could be great. But if it does go to waste, then what I do is I use this to then base the fit of the next pair, don't I? And that's what I need to do. And maybe I will put my Thea pattern down and look at the Philippa um, pants and just compare and see if there is anything glaringly obvious. So that helps me in my decision making with sizes and things. But this is the year. I promise I will not talk about these again next year promise <laughs> but that's the first pair of trousers that I really fancy having a go at making so as I've said I really like my Tilly and the Buttons Thea trousers so I really would like to give those a go again the first pair that I made I made in a flannel that I had had in my stash for a long long time it was really good quality fabric it was quite expensive when I bought it but for some reason I just got my brave pants on and I just went for it and I made them and I'm so pleased that I did but I think that it's um the fabric is so lovely it's actually made me think I would like to make another pair in a flannel again but a different colour I think it'd be really great that um Make It 140 has got uh, a few different um colours in in this um flannel and um, they've got a red and um, a black and a charcoal I think they've got a teal green or something like that <clears throat> and they've definitely got a few patterned ones as well I don't think I'd go for the patterns one ones so much she has said that she's going to bring some more in did I say make it 140 I keep saying that because that's their old name it's actually make fabric boutique I'm so sorry I stand corrected um so I would like to make another pair of those but that is something where I would have to buy the fabric the other two pairs of trousers, again, really quite jeans-like. First of all, I would like to make the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. I'm in the process of making them for my daughter at the moment. I've really enjoyed making them. They're actually quite an easy make and the adjustments and things that I've needed to make to get them to fit my daughter have been a bit time consuming, but I'm hoping that I could um, trace out the pattern for myself and that 
you know, I could do those adjustments for myself as well. Um, I don't know what fabric I'm going to use for that, but I do have a few denim, so I will try and use that if I if I can. If I don't have enough or I don't have the right colour, then of course I will go and buy some. But the other pair of trousers that I really fancy having a go at is the is an old pattern, and it's the True Bias Lambda Pants. These have been around for absolutely ages. They're really really popular, or they were in their in their time. I don't know if people still make them very much now, but I have. Uh, um, some really funky denim which I had originally bought to make a pair of dungarees and for some reason I've just kind of gone off the idea of making the dungarees and I quite like the idea of making these in jeans. Now I think this is going to be a bit of a marmite fabric, you'll either love it or you'll hate it. I think it's really funky. It's denim but it's all sorts of different coloured denim and I think that's a pair of trousers would look really quite cool and then just a nice plain black top or something like that. <laughs> So with the trousers, and I'm going to talk about skirts in a moment as well, but with the trousers, I am going to need some tops and I would like some jackets and I'd like jumpers and things like that. Now, this is something that I haven't given any thought to. So any ideas on these would be absolutely fantastic. But this is what I wanted to talk about in terms of buying your own clothes. So I know that I would really like to make some sweatshirts. I'm not sure about hoodies as such, but maybe a hoodie, definitely some sweatshirts. I've got lots of different um, sweatshirt patterns. I've got lots of sweatshirt um, material. I think it'd be really great to make them up. At the end of the day, once you find one that works for you, they don't take very long to make up, especially if you've got an overlocker because you can just zip them up. They don't even need the sewing machine. So really, I need to just get on and make and use some of this lovely, lovely fabric that I've got instead of it being wasted, being stored away. But at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong in buying fabric, uh, buying clothing either and buying things to go with some of your me made items so for example i really like knitwear i really like what some knitwear looks like and i don't think any amount of trying to make it yourself will ever match what you can buy in the shops yes of course you could knit it yourself but I take about five years to knit a jumper, so that's not going to work for me. And I'm I'm going to stop being afraid of buying clothes because I think that's a rut that I've got into. I've kind of thought I'm not going to I'm not going to buy it because I can make it because that's my hobby and that's what I do. And then actually, because life's busy or because I get into a bit of a state of procrastination, I end up not making it. So I do think I'm going to allow myself that that little bit of freedom to be able to mix and match my um, my bought and my ready to wear wardrobe as well as my um, me made wardrobe. Now I know some of you will probably be throwing your arms up in horror going, oh my gosh, you're not a true seamstress if you don't do that. And that's fine. I, I'm fine with that. I'm happy with that. My life is just the way that it is and I can't always make everything. <laughs> So the next category is skirts and I've just got two skirts on this one and the first one is an animal print skirt. Now I am not a massive fan of animal print and lots of you will know that it's not something I particularly have had in the past but I just really fancy an animal print skirt and I bought this fabric, I think it was from Bombay Fabrics, was it Bombay Fabrics? I can't think now where it was from but I bought this fabric in um, a, a festival somewhere, I think I was with Helen actually in Exeter and I bought this. I just really liked it and I think what I'm going to do, it's a jersey fabric, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my um, self-drafted jersey skirt, which I did a tutorial on, and I'll put a picture of it up here so you can see what that looks like and a link into the uh, video if you fancy having a go at making that. But it's such an easy, quick make to make. And I think that I could pair this with lots and lots of things. I think in the summer, obviously not now, but in the summer I could pair that with a, a cream top, um, a vest top, a t-shirt, but it could also pair really well with a black roll neck top for the winter and some black boots or some brown boots, that kind of thing. So yes, that's the first skirt that I'd like to give a go. The second skirt is the True Bias Maeve skirt. Now I made this recently for my daughter and I haven't shared this yet. Um, and I will be doing a makes video really soon of some of the things that I've made over the last couple of months. But I made hers in an embroidery anglais in this deep dark burnt orange is just absolutely glorious and really lovely now the fabric that I've got is a little bit stiffer than that but I did have to line hers and I won't have to line this 
I just absolutely love that. I really like monochrome anyway. I think that will make a fantastic mauve skirt. I want to do it with the three tiers. I think that would work really well. And I think that would then go with lots of things. And again, I think if it's the right length, it probably is something that would match um, and go with anything in the summer as well as in the winter and the autumn. But I think again, a nice roll neck top or, a, or an oversized black jumper with a belt, that kind of thing. I think that would look really lovely and I'm quite excited about making that one up. Now, as you know, I'm a bit of a fan of the boiler suit. Now, I wasn't, I didn't think I'd be brave enough to wear a boiler suit, but last year I made, well, it might have been this year. But anyway, at some point, I have made the Closet Core Blanca flight suit, and I absolutely love this flight suit. Once I'd made it, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't think I can wear this. And then I wore it once out and just felt fantastic in it and then I wore it all the time <laughs> but it's in a dark grey denim and that's great and that's fine and I really like it but I would like another one and as you know if you've watched me for a while I am a bit of a fan of Joe Brown's and I don't particularly buy anything out of Joe Brown's but I do like having a little look through their magazine for inspiration so it's an online shop um, basically and in there they had what I think is the Closet Core Blanca Flight Suit, basically. So they've got it in a green corduroy and they've also got it in a nice dark indigo denim there as well. Now, I really lo love this. As soon as I turned the pages, I was like, oh, I really want to make one. And I have got a dark teal green needle cord that I don't know if I've got enough. That's the only thing. And if I haven't, might have to rethink, but I would like to make myself a, another Blanca flight suit. I just, there's something on that, isn't there? Um, I just absolutely love what that looks like. I'm going to have to check to see what I've got, but if I can, that's what I'm going to be making out of this, and I cannot wait. <laughs> So with the Joe Brown's magazine in mind and where I take my inspiration from or some of my inspiration, I really love long dresses. They're not particularly practical, but it would be nice to have a few in my in my winter and autumn wardrobe that I feel look a little bit elegant and look really nice. Now I did have on the True Buyer Shelby dress the other day in a viscose and it's very summery, really sort of short sleeve, that kind of thing. And I would like to try and adapt that pattern to make something along these lines. So V-neck, button down, long dress. And they have quite a few of these throughout the magazine. Um, I'll try and find one as I'm talking to you. Um, I just really like them. I think they're they are really stylish, really pretty. They definitely suit my body shape, having that uh, V-neck. It's another one here in a beautiful green fabric, but they've got a tear on the bottom. But again, that's something that you could just easily add on to the bottom of um, the Shelby dress, even though it isn't actually on the dress itself, um, on the pattern itself. I just really, really liked it. So that's another um, thing on my wish list that I would like to make. The other thing from the wish um, from the Joe Brown's magazine that I really love that I don't have a pattern idea from and I will say the colouring on it is very similar to the dress that I'm wearing at the moment but I wanted to show you this because if anybody has any ideas of what pattern I could use to try and recreate this dress I would really like to know but I absolutely love this. So it's a jersey dress, it's got a wide waistband, it's a crossover so it's like a faux wrap and then it's just got a little bit of a, um, well it's just got a skirt on it, it's slightly swishy, it's not tight um, but I wouldn't say it's like a full circle skirt or anything but I, gosh I absolutely love that and I'd really like to recreate that in all the jersey fabrics. <laughs> So I would like that. So I only have one other item, which I would say is a staple item um, for my winter wardrobe. I have seen lots of different stylists styling up a totally plain black jersey dress, like a tank top or a t-shirt dress, but something that's really long, not particularly tight fitting, but not loose either, sort of 
like it's slightly looser than a bodycon sort of shape and then they wear it with either a jacket or they wear it with a shirt over the top or they wear a big baggy jumper with a belt to sort of tuck it in so it looks like a skirt and I just love the look of that I'm not entirely sure which pattern that I, I am actually going to use because I'd like one that's possibly got a bit of a racer style type back to it so again any suggestions for that would be absolutely great but I really like the idea of that I think that could be a really versatile um, look for autumn winter and spring i think it would work really well and uh, yeah i quite look, uh, look forward to having a go at that maybe something in like a rib knit so that it's nice and soft something like that but yeah so that is everything on my wish list for autumn and winter i think i've made my way through everything that's on there <laughs> um i'd really like to know what your thoughts are on um autumn and winter wear and what your thoughts are on mixing up your ready to wear and your me maids um yeah let me know what you think of any of those things and if you have any of ideas for the things that i've suggested like the tops and jackets and things the dress and the you know the staple dress that i'm after i would love to hear your ideas and opinions but it's been really lovely sharing that with you i hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you all again soon take care bye mm -hmm.